Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Rust in 2023. A lot of stuff changed with the, the years. So we're going to start to optimize your Windows, your Nvidia or Radeon drivers. And after that, we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people <laughs> are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically. And you just lower the software like that. And you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software. And also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's, it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So let's go to option, option over there, fill a view. Me, I'm playing at 90. Uh, I want to see like everything in front of me, but it will affect your FPS. So if I compare 70 to 90, you can expect a difference of 8 to 10% in your FPS. If you are very limited in with your computer, I recommend to start with 80, do my old guide. And after that, if you're still struggling with your FPS, maybe you will need to lower it. Add Bob deactivate it. It's, it's a visual effect that you want, don't want to use. I recommend to uh, activate FPS counter. Use advanced plus ping. So at the bottom left, you will see your amount of FPS and your ping. Super important because sometimes you maybe you think you, you, it's your computer who's lagging, but it's maybe it's your internet. Maybe it's the server that you connect to it. So it's pretty important to look at this. I recommend to deactivate internet audio stream. Physic, I recommend to put this one at zero. It will help a lot with your FPS, especially if you have a bad CPU. And uh, this is pretty much it for uh, that uh, user. We don't need that. Screen resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So uh, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p, go with 1080p. For the mode, I recommend to use exclusive. This is like the full screen, the official full screen. Don't use borderless or window. It's causing like some random stuttering. I don't use VSync. Always deactivate VSync when you play like a, an FPS game to lower your input lag. FPS limit, I unlock it at 240. This one really depends on your computer though. If you have like a laptop or a, a desktop with really bad uh, thermals, don't go too crazy. I recommend to lock your FPS with the amount of Hertz of your monitor. So for an example, if you have 60, just lock your FPS at 60. Because for an example, uh, if you have like a 60 uh, Hertz monitor and you're rendering 100 FPS, your ther thermal are starting to become like very high. Your computer will start throttle and now you will lag, you will have issues. So make sure that you don't do that. For graphic, graphic quality, I recommend to go with four. Render scale, go with one. It's not like if you go down, it will be a down scale. I don't recommend to do that. Your image quality will be very blurry with pixels and stuff like that. Uh, maybe you can use it like last resort at 0.9 if you did the old guide and you're still struggling with your FPS, but this is pretty much last resort. NVIDIA, the, the LSS, this one really depends. First of all, I recommend to use max quality if you want to use it. Don't use the other ones. They are not very good and you will see that when you stand still everything looks good but when you will move it becomes a little bit blurry so for me if you have a good computer you're running like a 1080 1090 something like that don't use nvidia dlss just use your parameter from your game but if you have like a 2060 2070 something like that and you're struggling with your fps go with max quality you can expect 15 percent boost in your fps for the shadow quality, cascade and shadow light, I recommend to go with minimum over there. You can expect 20% boost. This one is very huge, super important to put those one at zero, zero and no cascade. 
Water quality and water reflection, I, I recommend to go with zero if you don't have uh, if you don't want to have like some random drop in your the water section of the map. Super important to go with zero. Shader level level, I recommend something between zero and three hundred. For me, three hundred is really a, like a good spot. After that, you will lose too much FPS for the uh, image quality increase. Uh, but again, if you're limited with your computer, maybe start with 150, look at it and uh, just adjust it depending on where you are with your FPS. Draw distance, I'm playing at 1500. If you go lower, it's become difficult to see enemy. It takes a lot of resources. So if you're struggling with your FPS, test something like 1000 and for sure 500 if, if it's too much and you're, you're lagging like crazy. Uh, after that, Shadow Distance, I recommend to go with 50. This one's super important also for your FPS. Anisotropic Filtering, go with 1. This one is weird in this game. Normally, I, I always recommend to go with 8 or 16x. In this game, you're getting some too much sharpening with grain and stuff like that. So, just go with 1. Parallax Mapping at 0. Grass Displacement, Grass Shadow, you don't want to use that. So, this is a very good optimization. You can get... 5% in your FPS uh, boost. NVIDIA Reflex Mode, I recommend to using it if you have it. For mesh quality, particle quality, destroy your FPS when stuff explodes in this game, so make sure that you're using zero. Object quality and tree quality, I recommend to go with 100. That's a good compromise between FPS and image quality. Same thing with mesh, uh, max tree uh, mesh, go with 55. And for terrain, grass and decor quality, make sure that you're using zero. Image effect, I recommend to put everything at off, except maybe sharpen if you feel that your game is blurry. If it's not, like, just go with off. If you don't like to play a game without aliasing, I recommend FX AA. It's a basic anti-aliasing, and uh, your game will not become too much blurry with this one. So this is pretty much the anti-aliasing that I recommend if you want one. For experimental, I recommend to put everything at off. It's causing weird issues, so you don't want to use that and weird... FPS drop also, so make sure that everything is at off. So this is pretty much it guys for my Rust guide. If you have any question, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.